All right. I'm here with Brian Peterson, and I want to deep dive into your art business because you look like you do something very different than me. And that's always really intriguing to me. So tell me what kind of art do you do and how did you get to the space that you're in? Well, you know, I uh, started, oh, by the way, nice to be here with you, Andrea. Yeah. I started here uh, working with doing this kind of style actually about 30 Oh my gosh, is it 38 years ago? <laughs> Something like that. But I was doing it just on the side, just kind of messing around with it. And it's kind of a woodcut look, but it's really not a woodcut. It's a, it's a faux woodcut. And I got the idea from a boss of mine who was a brilliant designer, McCray Magleby up at BYU in Utah. I was working for him and he did a couple of posters using the style. I thought, wow, how did he do that? I didn't see any kind of linoleum cut or anything happening. And it was all done with pen and ink. So um, I kind of, I, I imitated that look for a couple of times and then uh, decided, uh, yeah, I think I could do this. This would be really fun. And then I began my career as a designer, graphic designer, and didn't do it again really that much until about three years ago when the pandemic hit. And then suddenly I was sitting around with not a lot to do in the design world. So I, I launched into this and um, really loved it. I mean, it's like, it was the best thing I ever found it. I tell people it's like, it's like uh, maybe a form of meditation to do these drawings. Cause it's just, they're, they're detailed, but it's really fun to watch them develop and that kind of a thing. So, so it is, a, it is kind of a faux woodcut and it's done in pen and ink and um, uh, done in, in negative. So what I'm really doing is producing a negative that I'm then going to flop in Photoshop with the invert button. And then I'll end up doing, have a, I'll have a re reverse of that. And I can even show you, I actually brought a couple of things to show you if you want me to do that. Is that good? Yeah, for sure. I'm also, I pulled so, up your Instagram right here to, to look oh, at yeah, so yeah, you yeah, following good. along. Look at his Instagram. But yeah, yeah show me. that's good. So you see this, this is actually the drawing. And it's done on tissue paper. And I don't know if you can see much detail there, but this is a cow. These are cows being sucked up into a, a Texas tornado. <laughs> and down below you have a Dairy Queen because there are lots of Dairy Queens in Texas. So, and the idea for this came literally in the middle of the night. I'm just laying there, couldn't sleep, two in the morning. I'm thinking uh, any good idea to me blends two things that aren't normally put together. So I thought, well, we have Dairy Queen and we have tornadoes and we have cows. So in this case, it's three things. The tornado comes along, goes across the pasture, picks up the cows, and then head that they together head toward the Dairy Queen. So this drawing is called Texas Milkshake. And that's kind of the basis for everything I do. I, it's not really very detailed or very i mean it's not a, an intelligent endeavor endeavor it's more or less just having fun and messing around with stuff so then i take that drawing and what i will do and i don't really have a way of showing this necessarily but i take this drawing and i reverse it out into a negative and then i take that negative and now i'm in photoshop and i actually draw on top of that negative with pen with my with my pen tool brush tool okay and then i add then i take that and import it into indesign and people say are you crazy that you're using indesign but then what happens is i end up importing it into indesign and creating color so let's see if you can see this is that coming through yeah so that that's kind of how it ends up looking so it's just kind of a fun deal with cows floating up and Dairy Queen and, and little fun little characters like these running people down here. This guy here is trying to escape. And so the whole thing is, is just really having fun with it. I like the idea that there are people hanging around the Dairy Queen that were unaware of the <laughs> impending danger. And then you have, of course, you have the floating cows that are all too aware. But in yeah. the background, you have, you have the cows that have passed right by that are just blissfully uh grazing in the field so and that that's that concept so I, i've done a bunch of uh these pieces recently that kind of took off and those were done with using aliens you know 
And the, and what, the way that happened was I was just, I was doing a piece for the Kessler Theater in Bishop Arts area. I'm in, I'm in Dallas, by the way. And Kessler, um, the Kessler Theater is in Bishop Arts. And they had, so I was just doing the theater. And basically we had a, um, a sky and I decided let's put stars in the sky. And then, oh, let's have a customer being sucked up into a spaceship. And I just did that as on a whim. I mean, I have this guy flying through the air and being sucked up into the spaceship. And people love that the best of anything. So they said, we like the guy being sucked up into the spaceship. So I ended up doing that. You can see back here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's, a, there's actually a cowboy here lassoing a flying saucer. And this became one of about 20 illustrations that I've done since then that, are, that I turned into prints. And, uh, and it's all about aliens. In fact, I can turn this around. I'm doing one right now on my computer. So this is right here. We have, this is the original drawing. Let's see if I can figure this out. There we go. This is the original drawing that I did of, these are aliens with horns and they're flying toward a bunch of longhorn cattle. So this one's gonna be called herding aliens. And it's basically aliens. And so what I did is I take this and I reverse it out. And that's what happens when you reverse it out. So all you're doing is using this little pen tool coming up here. If you can see that, I don't know if you can or not, but I'll go higher. But this little invert tool right here under adjustments does everything for you. Hit that invert tool and that reverses it out. See, so watch, I'll, I'll just do it. There you go. Okay, and you, I gotcha. And, and when you invert it, it becomes a woodcut. And then what you do is you go high contrast on that. And then you take your little pen tool over here and you just basically come in and draw. And I'm drawing right on, so you can see my arrow, make a little line over here. You can see right here, let's see if I can get that side. There's a black and I'm just basically coming in and I'm kind of, I'm kind of messing with this drawing and drawing on top of it. Like these cattle need to have more shape and i'll just do it that way so that's it nothing too terribly secret about it but so I very cool. okay so you draw it and then you invert it to where your shading turns into the light areas and so right so the black becomes white so yeah. I, so what, what my brain does is i i kind of think in in terms of reversing everything so if somebody has white teeth i'm going to make those teeth black and okay. then when you reverse it out, they're going to be white. If somebody has a, um, if there's anything about piano keys, if there are piano keys, the white keys become black and the black keys become white. And I draw it that way. And it's, it's fun. It's a challenge because I'm always thinking, okay, how would it be? So when you shade something, let's say you're trying to model a ball and the ball, let's say in the middle is highlighted. What does that highlight become? It becomes black yeah. and it goes out to white. You reverse it out, and all of a sudden, it's got a it's got a roundness to it, and you're doing it all with line work, you know. I gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So who who are your buyers for these? Well, I mean, it's interesting. I I, I I've ever heard of a there's a guy Rick Rubin. Everybody knows who Rick Rubin is, the producer, famous producer, um, mm -hmm. out of L.A. I think um, he once said that um, don't worry about selling your artwork. Just worry about having fun and doing it. Uh, if you if you have fun and if if it's something that you really like, that comes through in the artwork, and then people will seek you out. And so I do I do think you need to advertise. Like you need to put your artwork on Instagram, and I I use Instagram and Facebook and a little bit of Pinterest. Um, I think I get forty five thousand views a month on Pinterest which then takes them, usually there are no sales because I don't sell on Pinterest. They might see me again on Instagram. They'll suddenly, it, it takes about, you know, 10 times of seeing somebody's work over and over and over again. So you post almost every day or every other day something. And then what you do is uh, people event, gen, generally start to see it. On Pinterest, I have a link to my website and actually links aren't live on when on pin, uh, not Pinterest on Instagram. They're not live. So what you have to do is put your actual website, 
But on Facebook, it's a live link, and it takes you right to my web, my uh, website, which is, by the way, BrianPetersonArt.com, B-R-Y-A-N, PetersonArt.com. And then uh, from there, you can you can look at the uh, you know selection, of the catalog I've got of work, and you can pick. I I picked four sizes that I like because I think okay, not everybody has a big giant wall where they can put up a big poster. I mean, you look at some of the stuff I've got around the room here, and it's, it's big stuff, you know, but not a lot of people are going to be able to put that kind of stuff on a wall. So what I do is I give them sizes that um, I think a 12 by 12, 20 by 20, 30 by 30, 40 by 40, that they can pick. And, you, and often it's, it's the 20 by 20 that's the most common size. Okay. And, uh, and then I pricing-wise... Um, that's really interesting. That's really hard to figure that one out. Um, I started out thinking, oh, my work is really valuable, so I'm going to put it at these big high prices. And then I got thinking, well, that's not going to sell. So then I lowered them, and I thought, well, now, wait a minute, that's not worth it because the print is costing me 60 bucks. I'm selling it for $80. The, the mailing is $20. Wait, I haven't made any money. So, <laughs> so what the magic is, I take... Uh, the price of these prints, and I pretty much think, well, if it's a print sell, if I buy a print for sixty dollars, because I'm not doing it here, although I can, I can do prints. That Epson printer back there does seventeen by twenty twos, but I have an outfit here in town that does really beautiful work on coated, textured. It's kind of got a tooth to it. Um, it's, um, I think, it's hundred percent cotton rag paper. And I offer that as all, that's the only paper I want my prints printed on. And, and each print will be, let's say, $60 for a 20 by 20. Then I'll, I'll make it $120 and add the cost of mailing, which I add 20 bucks. So I'm selling a 20, 20, 20 by 20 for $140 with the idea that I'll make $60 on that print once I, I send you. it out. But I got to come back here and I've got to package it up and I've got to take it to UPS and do all that. So it's, I mean, I'm definitely earning that 60 bucks, you know, that I do. But, uh, and then really, uh, I love that Rick Rubin deal of, of if you love what you do, you'll do it well. If you do it well, people will notice it. People who notice it will eventually buy it. But if you go after the money, it's not going to work for you. Because the money, if you're just doing it for the money, it, it kind of comes through in your work. People don't detect a love for the work. And like I was showing you earlier on this, like this picture of these, of these aliens uh, herding the cow, the, the herd of cows. I just, I can't wait to get to the office to work on this print. I mean, it's like, this is what I want to do. And I got thinking, well, if I don't ever sell it, I don't care. I'm just going to do it because I like to do it. I yeah. like that. Yes. I've had that a co with a couple of them. I'm like, if I don't ever sell it, I might just, you know, keep it. And those are yeah. always been the best ones. It's a great, sure. atti it's a great attitude to have because then you don't feel the pressure. Art selling art isn't about pressure. Selling art is about receiving a reward on the back end of doing something you love to do. And um, if you do that, then the money comes automatically. It's really that kind of that way in anything you do. If you're a musician or whatever, and you're trying to figure out what the latest, greatest sound is, and you're going to produce it, it's not authentic because it isn't really what you would do if you had your own choice. It's anything is that same way. I mean, being any, any kind of an art artist of any kind, writer, whatever it might be, you're going to have the same challenges. So I uh, love what you do. I mean, it's a great thing to do. I mean, I, I'm, you probably can't see, it's just a small studio, uh, but I've got, my, I've got my keyboard here. You can see right there behind that yeah. print. And um, I play music and I listen to podcasts and I, uh, you know, I just have a good time. So. <laughs> I love that. You're such a yeah. true artist. You're like, <laughs> I don't care about money. I just want to have fun. And I just, I find myself needing to think like that a little bit more sometimes. Yeah. I'm but I, so I will tell you this though, you know, I kind of only been doing this for three years where I've been out to make money doing it. I mean, before that I was, I owned a design firm of eight people. And I did that for 20 or well, 38 years. So uh, I did that first and I did love that too. 
I love doing design work and we worked for major corporations and did a lot of identities and we did a lot of branding and we did websites and everything else. And so I, I was, I was the head uh, creative in that, that company. I'm, I've never been a good man. I'm, I'm okay manager, but I don't do it to manage people. I do it because I like to uh, do the artwork, you know? And so I, I did that. It was called Peterson Ray and company. In fact, you can look on our website. It's petersonray.com. I'm mean, sorry. Peterson.com is the name of the website. You can see the work we've done for 38 years and it's fun. It's a lot of fun, but I was really ready for a change. And I think I've hit the gold mine because I'm having a great time. And I produce about, oh, maybe a print a week, maybe, I mean, a, a design a week or, a, you know, uh, one piece of art per week, maybe two. And I get commissions. I get a lot of commissions from people who want me to uh, design maybe something for a husband who passed away. You know, I'm doing his portrait or, or I'm doing, I do pets sometimes. I do pets, you know. So, but you uh, do them all in your style, right? I do them all in my style because it's really what I like to do. You know, it's like, I, that's the way my brain thinks. Like what I'll do is I'll look at, everything in terms of turning it into kind of a woodcut uh look and um and I, I don't i don't ever get tired of it like i can sit here and do this every day all day and not ever feel tired in fact i feel <laughs> i feel enthusiastic and and generate it generates energy for me to do it so very cool i, like, I yeah. love that do you ever get asked to stray away from your style you know, uh, the hard part about it is, I'll tell you, this is this is a good point, I think, because in the design firm, I had clients and they would come to me saying, we are going to be putting in this shopping mall. We are going to be doing this annual report for the corporation. And really, the goal was was to sell them and to do whatever was appropriate to their brand, you know. So I would make sure everything I did was not about me, but was about them. And so I would, and that's the only way they would buy it anyway. If it was about me, they wouldn't want to buy it. They'd want to yeah. buy something that I'm selling for them. Uh, but in the art thing, what the where I where I turned the corner was, uh, no, I don't really want to be told what to do. You know, <laughs> in fact, um, so my deal is is with portraits and commissioned work, I get paid up front, and I tell them that um, you're not going to have a chance to sign off on anything. Uh, you're not going to see anything until the finished thing is done. Because if you want what I do, I just have to do what I do. And I only had one time when somebody tried to get in the way of that and tried to say, well, can I see you kind of a rough? And I said, there is no rough. Because really, when I start drawing, it's just going to be a it's going to be a drawing, pen and ink drawing. It's going to be this drawing. And so here's Here's the drawing I just did for the one I'm working on right now. This is the, this is the drawing. And if I had to show that to somebody and said, this is what I want to do, you see how it's in reverse? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. True. Okay. And, and they would say, well, are the cows going to look like cows? And, you know, and then I'd have to say, well, that that's where it'd be a problem because then you start feeling anxiety and you start feeling like, oh, now I'm having to bend my style to fit this project. So, I get the money up front, 100%. I do the job. I present them with the job. And I don't make any changes to it. <laughs> and that's, so that's totally different than where I was with the design firm, where in the design firm, they come in, we do a big meeting, talk about what we're going to do. I do some sketches and roughs and thumbnails. I, they, I might show them that, or I might show them a comp I produce on my computer of, of the design. And then basically um, it's off to the races and you do the design, they approve it at several stages along the way. And when you get to the final, it's approved. And then you've done exactly what they want you to do. So um, I, in fact, I'm right now, I'm going to give you a little sneak preview. I'm actually, I got, I got named as the, um, the, the official portrait artist for the Texas songwriters hall of fame. And I've been, what I do is these are, country these are stars music i mean songwriters that have been inducted into the hall of fame and they are this is a big deal for them you know so for example i don't know if anybody knows who tanya tucker is but uh when i was doing working with them i got thinking oh they're gonna want me to do a certain style 
And it just turns out that my client, Joe Abels, who owns a bar, the best bar in Austin, um, the Saxon Pub, said, I don't want to see anything. I don't want to see anything until it's done. I said, really? Okay. And that's when I got thinking, oh, I need to get out of that mode of showing them something. So I got thinking, I better show them a rough because this is a big official job. And so every year I can I've done it three years now. And every year I go back in and I'm kind of like, do you want to see anything? Nope. Just do it. And what's great about that is I end up doing just exactly what I want to do. Like this is, this is, so this is, this is kind of where I am on this one here. This is a guy named, uh, what's his name? Eric Johnson, guitar player. And you can see that I, I do my design background kind of help me with doing the type in the background of these drawings. These are little roughs that I, cool. I found little things that, that I about them in their life. Like, I don't know why the foot, but there was some reason why the foot kind of got in there. And then go over here and see if I can get, I mean, we see like um, their hometowns often. And I just did these roughs and, and I don't have to, I don't have to show it to anybody. I just do it. And I'm doing six of those every year these portraits and I just and the first time anybody sees them really is when I bring them to the Hall of Fame and they're 44 by 56 tall and they're put they're put next to the stage in a big row and it's a cool deal and I love it because I'm not really having to get anything approved I mean does that sound weird to say that but, no, um, no, really. I, so I'm in a still in a stage where I don't really mind being told what to do and stuff. And <laughs> so, but I can definitely see myself being where you're at in however yeah. however many years of just like okay, nobody because it it does get kind of monotonous sometimes when customers just pick you apart. Like I just painted a green lime on a glass uh -huh. and he's like, can you make that more green? And I was like, they're like yeah. it looks like yellow green. Can you make it more green green? I'm like. Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> but well, you know, Andrea, I'll tell that. you what. I'm 70 years old, so I've been around the block, and I, I did it that way. I started that, doing that when I was, you know, my company started my company when I was 31 years old, and I did 38 years of that, you know. Let's, yeah. let's tweak it. Let's fix it. Let's do this. Let's do it. And finally, let's just sign off, and it's done. And I guess... I guess what happened to me is I did, just had done it enough that I thought, no, if I'm going to do this and enjoy doing it, I'm not going to be answering to anybody. I'm going to just kind of do what I want to do. And what's happened because of that is I've 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 ended up doing all these prints of like even this Alien series that I've, I've got out, you know, that I, I don't do a thing except for do what I want to do. And people see it and, and then they, they send me a note, how do I order one of these? And I just give them my website and say, here, you go on this website and the order comes through on Squarespace and boom, it says they want a 20 by 20 of this. I mean, it's, it's turning into where I'm even selling like six for an office complex, you know, the hallway or I, there's a brand new restaurant here in Dallas that bought three of them for their entryway, you know? And so it's just fun how that works, you know, you just, and I, I feel really great about it and I didn't have to get it approved by anybody, you know? So, I mean, it may, might sound it might sound prima donna ish, but I don't think it is because I think that really I think it would be compromised. My work would be compromised if somebody said, "Well, could you move that cow over here?" and "Could you have that one flying saucer maybe not doing that and maybe move it over here?" I think that would be a problem. I'll tell you uh, the greatest quote I've ever heard, and uh, for problem solution quote. And I use this in design because when a client would come in and say, well, my wife likes purple, you know, and I'd, I think, well, it's interesting. Your why, why is your wife guiding this project, you know, suddenly, you know, or my husband likes purple, whatever it might be. So the quote is, give me a problem and I'll give you the solution. Give me the solution and I've got problems. <laughs> so, <laughs> because your job as an artist is to come up with the solution. And as soon as somebody who's not an artist is dictating what the solution is, you're no longer the artist. <laughs> you are the hands that are this person's using to create their vision. So I think that I just, I stand by that. I think that even the design I did that, I said, well, I'm going to be real careful about not doing too much of what this person wants me to do. So what I would do 
is if I have to show ideas, I would show them maybe three ideas and put, make one of those their idea, but then really sell the other two yeah. and make sure they're better than their idea. And so, um, because uh, let's be, let's be frank. Art is not really, a, art is not a group. It's not a group effort. Art is not a group effort. Great art is a, is if you're doing a, like what I'm doing is a solo effort. You're not getting a board of directors to agree to your ability to do art. So, you know, very true. You well, want to be the artist, not just the tool to make it happen. I oh guess. yeah. It's not fun to be the tool. Nobody wants to be a tool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of how I believe. And I've, I've lived by that. And now in my, in my, years of doing this now I, I, I stand by it wholeheartedly but that's what you got to do uh, I love that but it takes a while to get there you know I mean it takes a while to get there I, I hate to say it but if you start off with an attitude that is also a problem because I think I think a better solution would be to say if somebody comes to you to get to do a project and they want to control you <clears throat> you've got two choices one is to make it so expensive they can't afford you or if they're going to control you, you're going to get paid really well to have you controlled. Yeah. <laughs> or you can you can uh, say you just don't want to take the project because you don't have time to do it. Uh, but I would if you are doing something super fast and being controlled by somebody else as to what the art is, and they're not paying you much, you're not you're not making a living. You're not doing. You're not an artist. You're basically a a tool, like you said, to get that done. So, so true. Yeah. Okay. So your, what is your process? Like you said that you get an order in for a 20 by 20 and. Well, it, and really what it is, is I don't, I mean, for a life, I would say 70% of my work, I don't get any orders in at all. I do the okay. work on my own. Okay. Maybe, maybe 80%. Uh, and that, and the fun thing about that is that I'm basically deciding, getting up in the morning and saying, what do I want to do? I love coming to the studio, sitting down and saying, okay, what do I want to do? And I will tell you, and we should probably talk about this, there is a creative process because where do these ideas come from? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd love to talk about that because I have a couple just spinning in my head of like, I, I need to make time for this. I want to do this. And I'm kind of going between two different ideas right now, but I'm like, they're two very different. I'm trying to decide which one to do. Where, where does it come from for you? For me, it comes from living life and inputting into your internal computer your everyday life, and that is not sitting in front of a television set. Although there's nothing wrong with watching. Well, I love I love series on TV like anybody else does. Um, but I, I think the thing is is that you have to, and you can gain some things from seeing TV. But I like to look at uh, first of all, there are no new ideas. So what I do is I look at art. And I say, what, how would I do that? What is my spin on that project? Um, uh, Rick Rubin, once again, if you read, read anything about Rick Rubin, you'll say, there's, there's not an original idea on the face of the earth. All you're doing is taking an existing idea, processing it out of your own computer, internal computer, and then projecting it in the way you see it. You know, in the way you, and what makes it cool and unique is that it's your own because it's projected with your vision. That's what makes it cool and unique. So the best way to do art is just to start doing art. Just start doing it. Don't think about it too much. Get the nucleus of an idea. Like, I'll tell you what, I mean, literally I do, I, I go to sleep okay at night, you know, but it takes me about an hour to go to, go to sleep. So what I'll do is my wife, She's, she's gone. She's asleep. And I'll lay there in bed and I'll think, oh, okay. Well, this alien thing is kind of fun. What else, what else can I do? Let's have, how about an alien doing this and cows or a cowboy? Let's have, uh, and I'll just kind of create these ideas in my mind. What would happen if there's this great national park in Texas that's made up of these Cadillacs that have been put into the ground you know, in a row, and it's called the Cadillac Ranch. Okay, so let's have these Texas 
these aliens messing with the Cadillac Ranch. And instead of lifting a cow up to the spaceship, they're going to pull one of these Cadillacs out of the spaceship. And so I'll have a line of, ca of Cadillacs, one of the Cadillacs floating up with the aliens above pulling it up. Another one is I have is, um, I call it cow jacked, cow jacked. And what it is is where you see the, I mean, I've always wondered what happens when the cow gets up into the spaceship? And is that a good situation? I mean, you could, you're pulling the cow into the spaceship. It gets there. Okay, now the cow is inside the spaceship and the aliens are there. What does the cow do? Well, I think the cow goes ape. You know, it goes, starts running around the spaceship and probably destroys stuff. And so I got thinking, okay, let's, let's have a, let's, let's, let's frame this in Palo Duro Canyon. I like Texas landmarks. Palo Duro Canyon. And let's have this, these three aliens ejected from the spaceship and the cow behind the wheel flying the spaceship away. Now it's called cowjacked, like carjacked, you know. So, I mean, and those ideas, I mean, it, it's, on, it's funny because if somebody were sitting there with me and that, I said, I'm going to do one where the cow carjacks, cowjacks the spaceship, they, be, they might be like, well, that's a stupid idea, you know. Uh, but what I do is I don't let that discourage me or get in the way. I don't, even, I, don't even, I don't even tell anybody about it. I just do it. I say, okay, let's just get this happening. Let's do it. In fact, I think I, if, I, if I can pull it up here, I'll bring it up. I actually did that idea. But so that's, I just let ideas kind of come and then I don't overthink them because art is not about thinking. Art is about creating emotion and feeling. So you don't need a really amazing idea. I mean, look at the Mona Lisa. What is the idea behind the Mona Lisa? It's not really an idea. It's just a person. That's Is that person smiling? Or is that person, does that person have a straight face? What is it? Well, it could be either. And that's what makes that, what, that's what makes that so wonderful. And I don't think, it was it Leonardo da Vinci that did that one? I don't think he sat and thought for days about what what expression to put on that person's face i think he just did it you know so i think that's kind of what that's, that's what we do i think we just do it so here's that so so here's that illustration right there so let's get this word here I'll, i'm sorry about the jumping around i'd have to get it positioned this is kind of reverse here we go okay so you can see the three aliens down on the ground and the cow behind the wheel of the spaceship. And that background is Palo Duro Canyon. And that is the idea start to finish. And that's all it is, you know. <laughs> and I just love it. It's just fun to do it. So I, I like I the irony. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Say that again. I like the irony that you have with that. It makes yeah. you think. You're like, wait, wait. Something's, <laughs> something's it's different. Usually, I mean, the best ideas are usually a little bit of a twist, you know, because when you happen to watch a TV show, if you know what's going to happen in the end, it's not, it's not fun. But when it gets to the end and you go, oh, I didn't see that coming. Wow, that's a good show. You know, I like that show. So what I like to do is I like everything to come out of one little nucleus of an idea, just a little nugget of an idea. And you take that idea and you say, well, what if this, what if this was happening? And then you expand it into your own kind of vision. Well, my vision is that spaceship those aliens, that canyon, and that picture. And that's my vision. And I don't think anybody else would think of doing it this way. In fact, I know they wouldn't. And so um, I think that's, and I also think that in art, uh, it's kind of important to find your own style that you can own. And uh, what I mean by that is if you, I think it's okay to imitate people for a while. Nothing wrong with that, by the way imitate like I did with my boss. I saw what he did with this, this woodcut, faux woodcut look. And I thought, that's pretty cool. I would like to do the same thing. And then what happened is that I took it and made it my own. I said, but if I did it, I would do it this way. And I think that, um, so you really want to ultimately kind of create a style that when somebody sees it, they say, oh, that's that guy. And I think I've successfully done that with this art that I don't see anything on Instagram or Facebook that looks that similar. What's funny about it is I actually saw, I started doing these spaceship things with the cows and 
And that might have been my own ego saying, oh, I think I've invented something here. Because I started seeing other spaceships pulling up cows. In reality, that could happen way before my my art, you know. But I, it doesn't really matter. In fact, if somebody, I always say, if somebody says, well, you're kind of telling people how you do this. What if they rip off your style? I, I tell them, you know what, if they can do it better than me, they should do it. You know, that's <laughs> why I look at it. And... And, and if they do it, maybe they'll do it different than me. And maybe that'll be just as valid as what I'm doing, you know? So yeah. we don't, none of us own anything, you know, we're just borrowing it, you know? So borrow your method, borrow your style, borrow your tools, create something that feels good to you, that you like, that when somebody looks at it and says, I like Andrea because she does this artwork and I kind of associate it with her, then I think you're on to something at that point. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You make me want to find my own style even more. I have a little bit of well, an idea, but yeah, yeah, it's a it's a hard one because uh, finding your style is is maybe the wrong wrong motivation. Maybe what it ought to be is just do what you like mm -hmm. and let it kind of develop on its own. I want to paint with glitter. That's what I like. Yeah, <laughs> man. I'll tell you what, man. There you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about is where you just find, yeah, why not? You'll, if you want to do it, if I were to, if you were to say to me, Brian, I want you to start painting with glitter. I wouldn't go to, I wouldn't come to work, you know, because I would <laughs> feel like, oh, I don't want to work with glitter, you know, but you liking that and wanting to do that, that's all it takes. Cause you're going to do it better than me by far. Cause you want to do it. You're so right. I just like, if I'm, so I guess how we could, how could you lead someone through this? Like I was thinking about how I could really find out what I want to paint. And I was thinking like, okay, if I close my eyes and like what pigments would I want to use? And it's like hot pink. <laughs> and yeah. Like yeah. really, really just bright. I love bright colors. And yeah. or maybe like what it would look, what a pretty image would look like in my head. I'm trying to go through my head of like, what do I really like? What, right. what would I be excited to paint you know mm -hmm. i think that in the end um rick rubin once again i'm going to be selling him out the, out the <laughs> trees but you know i mean i just like what he says but he says just start doing it yeah you know if you because if you think about it you'll talk yourself out of it um, yeah you know even in owning my design firm all those years i was 31 I told my dad I was going to start my own design firm. And he said, oh, bad idea, bad idea. <laughs> you need health insurance. You got to, you have two kids. This is, wife and two kids. This is not going to be good for your family. You're going to, I mean, and I thought, yeah, if I started thinking about this, I could talk myself out of it. But I was so naive that I just, I just did it. So I think there's a certain benefit to being naive and to not even knowing what it's going to take and just do it. And if you um, get out the brushes, get out the paints, get out the other, whatever you want to do, get out the computer, or the pen and ink, the pencil, whatever it might be, and just start doing it and see what comes out of it. Um, because, you know, what I was doing initially, if you look at my Instagram, which I think is Brian Peterson Art is my name on my Instagram. If you look at that, go way down to the bottom where I started three years ago, it doesn't look anything like what I'm doing now. I mean, it looks a little bit like what I'm doing now. It's still the woodcut look, but it's it's a lot more serious. And I was doing blues artists, and I, I've always liked doing musicians. So I, I was um, drawing musicians, but I don't do that as much anymore now because I kind of worked through all that. And now I want to do something that's a little more fun and different and actually has an idea to it, you know rather than just a kind of a portrait that shows B.B. King, you know, a certain way. I want to actually talk about B.B. King or have some idea about B.B. King in the end of the piece. So I'm trying now to work ideas into everything I do. You know, what is my idea? I think that that's what really sticks with people anyway. They love ideas, you know. They want to see, well, what were you thinking when you did this? And I think what makes people really interested in art is you're going, well, that's bizarre. Why would you ever want to do, in my case, aliens and cows and cowboys? I don't know. Because it. For, I, I think where they got started was Texas. I just started thinking, well, Texas, everybody thinks Texas is full of cowboys. You know, of course it's not. But 
I thought, let's put cowboys in Texas and let's, and then of course there's the Marfa lights and there's the, the idea of, of aliens in Texas and New Mexico. So let's just pull aliens into the picture. And that's kind of how the idea was born really. So, Very cool. You have me yeah. thinking about now the idea behind things too. Not only what pigments do I want to use, like what do I want to say? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I mean, what you just said is really the key. What do I want to say? And I think, I think what you can say is you can say, I just want to, I just want to give joy, you know, I just want to laugh when they see this. That's good enough. Um, I mean, it's, it isn't art really about emotion. It's about ev evoking emotion. You know, the best songs are the ones where you get a feeling you're listening to the song and you're thinking, Oh, I get a feeling from that. And I think the same good thing goes for art. You say, what feeling does this evoke? So in, in my case right now, I'm kind of working on the idea of evoking uh, humor and joy. And, you know, and we have, we need joy in the world, right? We have enough other stuff. We need a lot of joy. We need artists. We need artists that are creating joy and creating, you know, positive images. And you can still be an artist that does negative images too. I mean, plenty do that. But I mean, it's whatever you want to do. I mean, it's just up to you to make it happen. So true. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to go run to my studio after this and just throw something <laughs> on that I want just to throw glitter everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Just have fun with it. I mean, that's what, that's what'll happen. And I'm looking at your questions to make sure I have answered anything that's useful to anybody out there. And if, if, by the way, if anybody out there is interested in, um, in talking about art or asking a question about art or I mean, sharing a thought maybe with me about art, about how they feel about it, you can always go to my Instagram, which is B-R-Y-A-N Peterson art dot com is my Instagram, I think. Or my, it's not dot com, but Brian Peterson art. And um, so I know you have a question down here about future goals and plans. And really, yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I, I, don't, I don't really believe in whole lot of planning and go, I mean, I'm a, I'm a planner. My wife will tell you that I'm the ultimate planner. I'm also focused, but really what I do is I kind of plan short term. I just kind of plan out what I'm going to do that day. Like I happen to know that I've got a design or a piece of art due for a, um, it's a songwriters contest that's due on Friday. And I know that, well, today's Tuesday. So I probably had to get going on that tomorrow. You know, so I'll come into work focused and ready to work on that. But that's about the extent of the planning. Um, as far as my art goes, I don't I don't know where I'll be in in a year. Hopefully somewhere totally different than I'm really having a great time with. You know, I think you can get mired in plans. I think if you think too much about I've got to plan everything out, it takes away the spontaneity. It takes away something that could happen accidentally. You know, and that's another, by the way, a good thing to know is that I think a lot of the best stuff that we do is totally by accident, you know, um, yeah. and not planned out. Yeah, just by experimenting. I just started this other series. I wanted to do a floating island series with little yeah. castles or whatnot on it. And I did the first one. And I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to. So, okay. and I had actually planned it a little too far out. I had done the backgrounds of a couple others. And now I'm looking right. at it after doing the yeah. first one. And I'm like, I don't even know if I want to keep doing with this. I kind of have this other idea. So I had over planned and planned the backgrounds of several ones where now I'm like, I did the one and it's not as cool as I thought. So, so yeah, that, that, that's just an example of, but, I guess, but, just being in the moment. Hey, you know what, though, Andrea? I'll tell you something else that, that happens to me on these illustrations. It's like this. You start off with, with really a lot of excitement about it. You start <laughs> to generate the art. There becomes a, There is a crisis, what I'll call a crisis point, mm -hmm. <laughs> where you're thinking, oh, this doesn't look good. I mean, it's not like what I wanted the it to be. The ugly thing. And usually with me, it happens in the coloring stage. Like I'll, I'll, I'll do the art, black and white art, this woodcut style, and I'll get to put my color into it. And I can't get the color to work right. And then so I'll, and there's the, the my latest illustration I did is called Marfa Lights. I don't know if I have it anywhere here, but it's called Marfa Lights. And it's, it's about Marfa, Texas and the, and the lights, mysterious lights that are on the horizon. 
you know, that nobody knows where they come from. And there's, so there's a lot of lore about them being Indian, you know, spirits and uh, g- energy generated by who knows what. But nobody's really figured out where they come from. So I did this. And uh, ultimately what happened is that I got into the coloring stage and I just about threw it away. You know, I came real close to, uh, to ditching it. And, and then all of a sudden, I just took out all the color, made it kind of more monochromatic and brought in some colors that made no sense. And that was it. That was the final answer. So, but I know that's like this. It's like you start off, you get excited about it. Suddenly you have this crisis. You think it's not going to work and you, you can ditch it. I've done that. Or you can push through and just wipe the slate clean and do something with that drawing or whatever, whatever color wise. And that makes it all of a sudden work and then it takes off. And then suddenly it's, it's what you wanted it to be. But it's almost like you have to have that crisis to get to that point. Nothing yeah. is ever easy, you know. I mean, I don't think it's any, there's nothing about being easy. It's just, you know, you have to be, have to, have to endure and be, you know, determined is a good word. That's a good point. Yeah. Cause I through, through the middle of it, I was like, this is taking way longer than I wanted to take. And then when it was finally done, I was like, look what I did. <laughs> so it's like, mm-hmm. you get that excitement and it's like, yeah. And there's like, okay, now we're back. It's like a painting roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, it is. Absolutely. No, it, roller coaster is a good, a good uh, metaphor because it, you are kind of like up and down all the way through the process. And sometimes you end up with something you're not really that proud of. And, um, I, mean, I can look back on my Instagram feed and see illustrations that I kind of cringe at. Like, oh, that doesn't work that well, you know. But I don't really worry about that because um, it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't think art is good or bad. I think art is whatever you create. And I think that you should never take somebody else's judgment as being a the final answer on your art. I think mm-hmm. it should it should come from you. And I don't think anybody has the right to say, this is bad art. I think that if you, if you think it's bad art, it's bad art only because you think it. But I think that the best art, I mean, look at Van Gogh. Van Gogh, I, I think, did not sell a painting while he was alive. I think his brother, brother, I want to say Cleo, I'm not sure if that's his name, uh, ended up selling all of his artwork. But Van Gogh thought he was a miserable failure. And then what happened is that um, he died <laughs> and suddenly p- people started saying, wow, this work. And then pretty soon they just started going nuts, you know? And, um, yeah, so I think that's kind of, that's kind of what, ha- Hey, I, I just realized I've got that Marfa lights on the wall here. I'll show it to you. So this is, this, it's framed. I didn't realize I had this. So this is the Marfa lights. I don't know if it's got a reflection in it, but you can kind of see how it looks. Oops. So it's going the wrong way, but you can see what I put it looks like anyway. Yeah, so no, mon- I love that. Very monochromatic, you know, it's not, and that was the answer. So don't let anybody discourage you from your art. And don't. And you know what, I don't even know that you, it's a good idea to be asking a lot of opinions about your art. I don't, I, mean, I, I don't think it's a good idea. I think what happens is you, I know, it, 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 I think artists are very fragile. I think we're a very fragile lot. And I think we are purposely because we're trying to be in tune with a higher level of creativity. And therefore, it makes you sensitive and it makes you fragile. And all it takes is for you to do a piece of art and somebody who fancies himself a critic to say, well, that's crap for you to, to lose all of your momentum, you know, and say, oh, I'm, I'm not good. I uh, come to the conclusion, I'm, I guess I'm just not good. And uh, I think it's a sad, sad thing because um, that person doesn't, doesn't know anything more than you know. You do about art, you know, your art. Oh, you're the only person that knows about your art, and what you do. So, you know, I, I don't know. It's a hard thing because, I mean, I know shows get juried. People put in art and shows and they get juried in or out, you know, somebody's judging it. Yes, I like this. I mean, I deal with a print company that they they basically sell my prints and they so they can say, we, we, we don't like this one, we like this one. But I say to myself, that's great. I mean, it's good that you 
like anything, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean that one they don't like isn't isn't good. It just means for their purposes, the one they do like is going to do better and sell better, you know. And so that's their right, one hundred percent to say that. But I, it should never discourage me from doing art, you know, or doing that style of art, you know. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it, d- it definitely does. I'm really just over here pondering everything. Yeah. Well, and just applying it to my own life, selfishly. I'm like, yeah, well, it, I, mean, it's, I have a lot to say, but, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out. I know that. I mean, this is all experimental on my part. I don't really even know where I'm, what I'm doing and where I'm going. I mean, somebody said, well, how'd you come up with this? I said, I don't really even know what I'm doing, honestly. I'm just having fun, you know. I'm saying, I guess it, it's, it, it should come out of me because I'm the only me in the, in the world that I'm aware of, unless I've got a doppelganger somewhere. I, don't, I haven't run into him yet, but I'm the only me. So I'm the only person qualified to do this kind of art because I'm the only me. So I'm just going to do the best I can do with what I have to work with. And, and that's going to be good enough, you know? Yeah. That's so right. Okay. I'm going to do this series that I have in my head. I've already, I've, I have, like, Good. I'm going to do it because I'm the only me who can do it. You are the only you, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's a wonderful thing when you think about it, how unique everybody is, you know? I mean, it's like, there's, <laughs> there's not two alike, you know? So if, there's no contest here. There's no contest of who's better or who's more qualified or whatever. I mean, the Hall of Fame chose me to to do this these portraits because their their Hall of Fame portrait artist died. You know, I mean, that's what happened. So they were looking around and they went on Instagram and they saw me doing musicians and they said, well, you do musicians. So they, they, they called me up and said, this other portrait artist did oil paintings. And they said, well, can you do, be our new, new portrait artist? And I said, wow, what a fantastic opportunity. They said, well, can you do oil? Can you do oil paintings? No. I have no clue how to do an oil painting. And I, I said, no, I can't do oil paintings, but I can do what I do. Mm-hmm. And luckily they said, oh, okay, well, all right. Then do what you do. But see, in their mind, they were thinking portraits are oil paintings. Mm-hmm. You need to do oil paintings. But luckily I didn't have to do that. Yeah. Luckily you oh. just, you're just doing you. Okay. Last question. <laughs> yeah. Just doing and... who I am. And that guy was good, by the way. He was real good. Cool. But I was never going to be him. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 So last question as we wrap it up, what's some advice? I mean, you've given a lot of advice. Wow. For some... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's worth what you're paying for it, by the way. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you talk a lot and I love it. I love when people just kind of go on and on about their thoughts and yeah, well, me, you, you make me think. But oh, good. What... Well, I'm glad. I hope it, hope it works out that way. Yeah. Yeah. What's this, What's your last piece of advice? Something that you would give someone who – wants to do what you're doing, but they're in the very starting position. They're like, they have a job. You know, they're like, I want to be able to do this. I want to paint what I want to paint. How can I do this? What's your best piece of advice? When you say they have a job, they have a commission? Or they They have a job doing something else in my computers or whatever on my, okay. Yep, that. The the job they don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not, you have an art, you're in a job, you don't have an art job. I mean, you have a job where you're, fine you're a secretary or administrator for some corporation but you really want to be an artist um i would say there's no better time to start than right now and don't let um don't let thinking about it get in the way of doing it you know Mm -hmm. i think that and by the way you know i heard one time that the best writers write 1500 words a day the best golfers hit 1000 balls a day what do those two have in common because golfers have nothing to do with writers what they have in common they do a lot of it Mm -hmm. they want to do it and they do it yeah Uh, if you're going to be a great golfer you don't think about doing about going to the range and hitting a thousand balls you just go to the range and you maybe start with a hundred ball and then you go home. And then eventually when you become a pro and you have all that time in your hands to do nothing but golf, now you're trying to hit those flag sticks and you're trying to do a thousand. And, and the same thing goes for the writer. 
a writer writes 1500 words a day, maybe they don't go to bed until they write those words and they force themselves to write those words. And then out of those, out of that forcing themselves to, so, to write the words come, become, comes brilliance. Because what happens is you can't write 1500 words and not have 10 of them mean something more than the other 1490. And those 10 words are like, oh, that's good. That's good. And then what happens is as you do it more, you, you maybe get 200 words that mean more. I think as you do drawings and you, you do a drawing, my grand, I tell my grandchildren, you want to be an artist, start drawing. And don't erase anything. I had a, I had a grandchild that was a drawing and erasing. Well, you're, well, you're erasing it. I, it wasn't good. You know what? Don't erase anything. Get a new piece of paper. Draw something else. And then get a new piece of paper. Don't take, don't go backwards on anything. Just go forward on everything. So my advice to anybody getting into art that maybe is doing something that they don't want to do right now uh, in something else is just to spend, let's say, an hour a day and say, I'm going to, from 7 to 8 o'clock every night, I'm just going to, and then I'm going to watch my Netflix after that, or I'm going to go for a walk before that, but for that one hour, I'm going to sit in front of a blank pad of paper with a, with a pen. And I'm going to start just drawing anything. Just draw anything. And I'm going to maybe draw this. I'm going to draw this can of pens, you know. I mean, I did this drawing. This is one I did in Hawaii recently. And it's, I only have my tissue paper there. But uh, this basket was just sitting there. And I thought, okay, I'm going to draw that basket and that umbrella and that bush. And I just started, I mean, I just started drawing. If I would have thought about, if I if I'd have walked around forever thinking, what am I going to draw? I don't want to draw that. That's not going to look good. Or I would never draw anything. and I'd be going home with nothing. But instead what you do is if you, if right now, Andrew, where you're sitting right now, if you, if you look just where you're sitting right now, just train your eyes off the screen and look at something else that's not on your computer screen. And just look, I'm going to look at this lamp right here. And you start looking at that lamp, you start saying, you know what, it's got really cool things happening. It's got great reflections. It's got a cool structure. I can see this shape, this shape. I can see the cord winding around the top of it. This is the lamp I'm looking at right here. I'm looking at that lamp yeah. And, and I'm going to say, I can see all these things. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of paper and I'm going to put it in front of me and I'm going to start drawing that lamp. I'm going to draw that cord. I'm going to draw that. And then I'm just going to draw that lamp. And then I'm, and that's all I'm going to do. It's not going to be in hanging in a museum and it's not going to be anything I'm going to show to anybody necessarily. I'm just going to draw that lamp. And then what happens is you find yourself looking, and when you start studying life around us, you realize that everything around you is full of information, full of information. Um, and if you start looking carefully enough at it, you're going to realize that, wow, that is the coolest thing ever. That coffee cup is a pretty cool thing. That whatever it might be, box of Kleenex, the way the Kleenex kind of, or the tissue kind of rolls around. That's a pretty cool thing. And then what you start realizing is that you were surrounded by cool stuff. Now, take the hand, put the pen in the hand, put it on the paper, and start drawing. And if you do that, you might, don't, don't make it accurate. It doesn't matter what you do. Don't even, don't even judge it. No judging going on here. Draw it. Just start drawing. Yeah, get good then, at your craft. And then just call it that. You're yeah. done. And what is good? What is good at your craft? What does that For mean? Your version of good, where you're right. happy. Exactly. That. When when you start saying, oh, you know what? That exceeds my expectation. Mm -hmm. That's better than I thought it was going to be. You know, the coolest thing about the style I've got is when I've got this happening. Let's see if I can find it again. Maybe I can't, but oh, here we go. Um, when I'm doing this art, the my the the best thing I have is I'm gonna go back to this. Let's go back and make that like 
Okay. So on this art, the coolest thing ever is when I've done that art and I have no idea how it's going to look. But you see here, you got cow. The, the chest of the cow is white. The reflection is white. The alien head is black. The sky is white. The ground, it looks like this. And then what you do is you, you say, now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab ad adjustments and I'm going to invert it. And it's, that is the moment that is just total euphoria for me because I look at that and go, God, that's way better than I thought it was going to look. <laughs> is that what I'll do now is I'll often go back and look at my drawings and I'll, I'll look at the final piece that I've come up with and I thought, well, that drawing looks like, that, that drawing doesn't look anything like the final piece. You know, it, it got so much better after I reversed it out and started drawing on top of it. And so it, then you start thinking, I'm excited about this, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of how it is. So, well, there you go. Um, I think I've given you all I've, I've got. So. Yep, we've gotten an hour, which is more than I than most people. <laughs> more, talk. You're gonna want to edit this it. way down, you know. I love it though. No, this is this is great. We've had we've had several comments on here. I just want to share with you. So oh, you yeah? commented saying yes, uh, th this is so inspiring, and then somebody uh, <laughs> makes me feel commented. so good to hear that. Yeah, good. And then they're all they're all commenting. Thank you, thank you. Um, they said. And then Stefan commented, he agreed with you. Yep, don't let thinking about doing it get in the way of doing it. Um, yeah, so everybody's just echoing what you're saying. And we yeah. appreciate you taking a whole hour out of your time to, you bet. to, <laughs> to well, talk no, to you. I had a good time. I had a really good time. You know, it, it's funny because when you do these kind of things, it makes you kind of, it sharpens the tool. and makes you kind of think, well, yeah, I could probably be doing this a lot more on my own. But, I mean, I'll tell you what, if you love doing it, you know, I mean, I have, uh, I play the piano. And I played the piano in bands, and I and and I played piano since I was ten years old. So I played the piano for sixty years because I'm old as dirt. But um, when I was when I was raising my kids, um, I wanted them all to be piano players. And right now I've got one out of four that's a piano player. And what is the difference between that kid and the other three? And they all, by the way, the other three have all found other things that they like doing. And the one that plays piano just does it for fun, but she's really good at it. But the difference was, is when she would walk by the piano, she had to stop and play something, just standing in front of it, just play something and then walk on. It was like five notes and then walk on. And I got thinking, that's what makes, that's what makes a good artist is that do what you would do for fun. Do what you would do if nobody cared and don't try to meet anybody else's expectation don't try to become anything don't try to be famous don't try to make a lot of money don't try to don't try to do any of that um but do your art and show your art do your art show it and the reason why i say show it nothing sadder than an artist who doesn't show their art yeah, because, share it. Because you'll never, nobody will ever see it. Yeah, Why would get you it out it? of the studio. Yeah, do it. Show your art. Uh, that's when people come back to you and say, Andrea, God, I saw that piece. That's I hated cool. it. That was really <laughs> cool. Yeah. And what does that do to you? Oh, it's maybe cooler than I thought it was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to keep going. And one of my mentors, who, if you want everyone to see a great Texas artist, John Fleming, johnfleming.com, F-L-A-M-I-N-G, uh, said to me when I first started doing this art, he said, Brian, two words, keep going. Just keep going. That's my advice. Don't yeah. stop. Just keep, keep going. going. Don't yeah. stop. Okay. I got Just you. keep going. <laughs> yep. Just keep doing it. So, all right. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you so you. much for coming on with us. And I, it was nice to get to know you. This, uh, Yeah, this was Likewise. this was great. I loved it. Any um, questions, send me a note on Instagram. Uh, I'll be happy to answer or talk to you, whatever you want to do. So. Sounds good. All right. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk you to you too. later. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to click end right here and then it's going to okay. end.